Since the day I decided to get into sim racing, I've spent thousands on gear, assembled and installed dozens of rigs, tested hundreds of products, reviewed nearly all mainstream wheels in the market, started a YouTube channel, collaborated with sponsors, and even got a job in real motorsport. <laughs> Needless to say, I've gotten quite acquainted with the world of sim racing and I've learned a thing or two that would have been really helpful to know before I jumped into all of this. Bruh. So in this video, I've compiled 5 important things you should know before buying a racing simulator and make sure to watch until the end for one that is especially overlooked. A big shock to many and a disappointing reality is that sim racing, despite it all being virtual, is quite expensive. From the wheels to the pedals, to what it will hold up, to what will run the game, the monitors, the software, etc. It definitely can get expensive, and I don't think anyone will say it's an affordable hobby. Of course, there are several ways to mitigate the cost and save some money though. For example, some products will offer a better bang for your buck than others, and some products are just completely not worth it. <laughs> In my opinion, a budget entry will cost between two to six hundred dollars. Mid-range setups can go up to two thousand, and a higher-end setup can far surpass even that. It really depends on what you already have available, such as a PC or console, monitors, etc. Another important consideration is to understand the difference between a racing sim, a simcade, and an arcade racing game. A racing sim strives to replicate real-world driving physics and the overall racing experience, demanding precision and lots of practice. This is what sim racing is all about. The major titles in this segment include iRacing, Assetto Corsa, Assetto Corsa Competizione, among others, and are mostly played on PCs rather than consoles. A simcade sits between a racing sim and an arcade racer, offering a more balanced approach that blends real-world physics with more forgiving controls and gameplay. These are often seen on console games such as Gran Turismo, Forza Motorsport, and Project Cars. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, arcade racing games prioritize fun and accessibility, often sacrificing realism for more exaggerated and entertaining gameplay. These games are usually not designed to be used with dedicated steering wheels and pedals, as they are usually made to fit the controls of your system. Knowing these differences is key to selecting the right type of game and equipment that suits your preferences and expectations, ensuring that your investment in both time and money aligns with the gaming experience you desire. Now you've heard me mention PCs and consoles throughout this video, and this naturally segues into my third point which emphasizes the critical importance of platform compatibility before investing in any sim racing hardware. You see, platform compatibility is more than just a technical term. It's the key that ensures that your steering wheels, pedals, rigs, and other accessories will communicate properly with your chosen gaming system, be it a PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. The landscape of sim racing is dotted with a variety of tools and accessories, each tailored to specific platforms, and mismatching your equipment with your system can lead to unexpected expenses, compatibility issues, and a great deal of frustration. It might mean that the prized steering wheel of your dreams simply does not work with your console, or that the game you've been excited to race on isn't available for your system. Are you serious? So before hitting the purchase button, always take the time to delve into the manufacturer's specifications, read community reviews, and maybe even consult online forums specific to sim racing. This careful research ensures that the gear you're investing in matches your chosen system and aligns with the games you are most passionate about. <laughs> This preparation might seem tedious, but it's a step that can save you both time and money in the long run, allowing you to fully immerse yourself in the authentic racing experience that you're seeking. As a general point of reference, it is reasonable to assume that all sim racing hardware you buy will work on PC, but it is unlikely to have console compatibility. So especially if you're playing on a PlayStation or Xbox, make sure to diligently research before making a purchase. Now 
as previously mentioned, sim racing is expensive, so you'll want to avoid constantly upgrading your hardware as much as possible. Thus, it is important that you consider future upgrades when building out your sim. Planning for the future doesn't just mean buying the latest and greatest, it means looking at the potential evolution of your setup, the games you might want to play, and how technology could shift over the upcoming years. Think about the scalability and modularity of your components. Can you upgrade your wheel without replacing your wheelbase? Can the pedals be replaced independently? If you buy a shifter or handbrake, can your brake support it? These questions may seem like something for the distant future, but they are essential to answer before building out your setup. Selecting components that can be individually upgraded or that are a part of a modular system can save a substantial amount of money in the long run. So by carefully planning and considering these aspects, you can create a flexible sim racing setup that can grow and evolve with your interest and future upgrades without the need to completely overhaul your equipment every few years. Essentially, investing in future-proofing your setup can lead to more time on the track and less time, money, and stress spent on continuous upgrades. And lastly, but certainly not least, are space requirements. Depending on the complexity of your rig, you might need significant space not only for the simulator itself, but also for additional equipment such as screens, speakers, and other accessories. A full-fledged racing simulator might require a dedicated room, while a more modest sim racing setup can often fit into a living room or a spacious bedroom. So consider the dimensions of the products and the ergonomics of your setup, and don't forget that you need to be comfortable around your rig. Remember, your comfort and ease of use are as important as the equipment itself, and crowding everything into a tight space that's too small can detract from the overall experience. Planning the layout, considering how it fits into your space and looking for inspiration online, can ensure that your chosen setup is a joy to use rather than a cumbersome obstacle. In conclusion, entering the world of sim racing is an exciting journey that offers unparalleled realism and engagement with the racing world, yet it requires careful consideration, planning, and investment. By understanding the cost, recognizing the differences between types of racing games, ensuring platform compatibility, planning for future upgrades, and properly assessing space requirements, you can avoid common pitfalls and build a sim racing setup that will provide endless hours of thrilling virtual racing. Whether you're a novice looking to dip your toes into sim racing or an experienced racer looking to take the hobby to the next level, level, I hope these tips will guide you toward a more satisfying and successful sim racing experience. So with all that being said, as always, thank you all for watching, stay safe, and have a fantastic rest of your day.